Hello everybody, welcome to Game Guru Max Developer Preview. <laughs> uh, so this will be broadcast number five. Um, I'm going to skip straight to the meat because I know that's what you want to hear. Just want to say though, you can ask your questions in the chat and I shall answer a lot of them at the end and trying to get all this thing done all within 15 minutes. So bear with me on the questions, but certainly feel free to start posting your questions in the chat window to the right of this broadcast. So moving swiftly to the first point, which is my progress on the GameGuru Max Imgui integration on Wicked. Um, <laughs> been a bit crazy, actually, uh, in order to try to get the render to render at exactly the right point in the pipeline. But I've managed to succeed, which is great. And I just want to show you proof. Proof is in the pudding. So I'm just going to run this little shortcut. And what you're looking at right now is a 64-bit binary. Um, and it's running inside, or rather along, alongside the uh, Wicked engine, uh, rendering the exact same Imgui code that was in uh, Game Guru Classic, uh, sorry, in the Alpha 1. So that means um, a source code variant. Basically, it's a single code base with multiple variants. So when we do bug fixes, that bug fix can go back in time as well as forwards in time and all, all ultimately going towards max. So that's the idea behind it. This is effectively code that we've already been using for a while, but now it's running under a 60 sub and alongside uh, and inside, in fact, the Wicked Engine's rendering pipeline, which was a bit of a pig to actually get to this point. And in fact, little reveal, um, 10 minutes. <laughs> this binary was compiled not less um, uh, than 10 minutes ago uh, because I broke it. <laughs> I thought I'd get some coding done, so half an hour ago, tinkering away, cleaning up some code, moving a little thing, specifically the entities panel, the one on here, dink, and the terrain tools panel, they were missing, and I'd like to have had them for this live broadcast. So I thought, well, I'll have a little bit of a play. Then about 50 minutes ago, completely broke it uh, with about 15 to 30 errors, and I had to sort of blast through them. But yeah, I uh, fixed it all and got it up and running with the panel displaying with 10 minutes to spur. So I'm pretty pleased about that. So just to prove that the interface actually does indeed work, I can show you the menus. So you can see all that works fine. You've got the tool uh, tool bars with the tool tips on top. I can switch to the waypoints panel, go back to the terrain tools, which has given me the most recent grief. And you've also got to the tutorial mode with the split window. So you've got the video at the top and an interactive tutorial at the bottom. So anyone who's played with the Alpha One of Game Guru Max, which if you're pre-ordered, you can actually download it from your uh, product page on your TGC account, you can grab that, and all of this will work. All these tool bars, all of these menus, these panels, etc. But it was always running in the old 32-bit, old graphics engine system. Um, this is a milestone for me, because this is actually running on the brand spanking new 64-bit binary, and I needed this first. I needed this before I went on to start doing things like texture loading, model, loading, uh, getting all of the mechanics up and running. Um, but this should happen relatively quickly now. I say relatively because development's always a bit of a pig and you can't exactly estimate exactly how long things take. But the good news is what you don't see, but what's actually humming away in the background is all of the Game Guru logic from Alpha 1 is actually being run right now. You just don't see it. You don't see the train. You don't see the objects. I mean, if I go to entities, I've got my entity library, but there's nothing in it. Because, <laughs> you know, I've the, the, the folder, the files folder, um, has hardly any media in it. I've deliberately kept it light, so I'm only moving things in to the max installation that is absolutely necessary. And a big chunk of the thing that I've taken out, which actually has caused some of the delays, is the entire terrain system, which had a lot of tendrils into rendering grass and other things like that. So you can imagine that now I've ripped it all out and I've got the interface back up and running on the 64-bit. It should, 
fingers crossed, touch wood, be plain sailing as to reintroducing the stuff that's related to a graphics engine, bringing those things back online. And in parallel, uh, the new terrain system which Mike is working on. And at some point, probably in the next two weeks, we'll start crafting out the new set of function calls and then supplanting the old terrain system because it has a lot of tendrils into different parts of the system um, with the new terrain system and what that might require. But your functionality, say, in the terrain tools panel would stay the same. We'll certainly expand it as, as needed as features start popping up. For example, the square brush instead of just a circular brush. So I will not dwell on this. I'm happy that it's done and here it is. It's proof in the pudding. You can tell it's wicked because if you look in the top left corner, you've got the old uh, Wicked Engine FPS readout and a warning which says this is slow in debug mode. So <laughs> that's proof enough. I'm not faking it. This is a real thing. So that's that. Now I want to show you something arguably better. So if I just close this one down. And then we go to my video that I prepared earlier because I wanted a bit of suspense music and I wanted some nice cameras but what you're looking at now you've seen the seller demo from previous ones what this is is our animating zombie so he's fully PBI'd up he's got all his textures all of his various bits and bobs uh, he's fully rigged and we've just started off with two animations an idle and some walks We've also done all the other animations I talked about previously, but those are still being refined and tweaked. And so we're going to see that um, probably next week, maybe a next week's sneak peek, or certainly shortly after that. Um, because I really want him to start off on the floor and then lift his head up and look at you and then stumble to his feet and then try and bite your neck or something. <laughs> We've also got the weapon done as well. So certainly in VR, you'll actually be able to hold the iron pipe in your hand. Uh, as you wave the VR controller about. So I'm really pleased with that. Um, I think I've got another section of this video which is a close-up. So it will switch to that shortly. Uh, do let me know if you want me to put this on YouTube. Maybe I should make it a little bit more uh, exciting before I do. Maybe have the uh, zombie actually walking instead of just sliding around on the spot. Uh, before I actually reveal it to the wider world. But anyone who's on my live broadcast chat right now gets to see it up close and personal and uh, this will be the very first time you'll have seen this so I hope you like it. I'm just glancing over to the chat window as you see I've gone a bit more professional since broadcast 4 and I've moved the chat window onto another monitor so we don't get that weird cascade of windows as I'm watching YouTube as you're watching YouTube as I'm watching YouTube etc. So there's a couple of questions popping in so thanks for that. I'll answer them in about four minutes. Um, there's one more piece of news that I would like to talk about um, which of course is VR, which I've alluded to a couple of seconds ago, which is Game Guru Max will actually have um, a strong VR element in the sense that you can create good VR games. Not just v um, conversions of keyboard and mouse and monitor games, but actual VR games where the controller plays a primary role in the interface. And last week we postulated the question, should we use SteamVR or OpenXR? And I am not kidding, as if I've prodded the universe. Because a couple of days later, because remember this was a choice, it was an either or. A couple of days later, Steam announced that they've actually going to release a developer beta for their OpenXR support. Bottom line is, we only have to write OpenXR once. And once that code has been done and it's tested and it runs independent of the Steam client, um, that's great if you say an Oculus Rift user, but you're out of luck if you're an HTC Vive user. In theory, this developer mode, this developer beta that Steam has just released, would allow an HTC Vive user to log onto their Steam client, access our software via this OpenXR support, and be able to use their HTC Vive headset with Game Guru Max without us having to support Steam VR. At least that's the theory. It's just a page. Let me just show you. Let me just come out to this video and open up the um, 
web page I found. Here it is, OpenXR Developer Preview. It's all great news. It's really what we've been waiting for because that means OpenXR and the Vive become one thing. Now, this is what I don't know. Do we still have to write in Steam VR? <laughs> it would make no sense if you had to. I'm pretty sure if you've written all of your code in OpenXR, it's just a case of compiling and then detecting the runtime, say, through the Steam client or something like that. But that's the fingers crossed moment. That's the part where we find out whether we are literally have come to an end of VR fragmentation. Coders now only need to write in one API and get instant support for all headsets, all controllers. Happy days. So that's great news. Really happy about that. And we actually have already started OpenXR development. Way too early to show anything yet. Um, but I'm pretty optimistic that we'll be able to show some juicy things a good chunk before we actually get to the release point. So that's my last piece of news, which I'm really happy about. I am checking the clock and my discipline is excellent. I have allowed four minutes for answers to your questions. So I'm just going to look over to this monitor, which seems to have a, an earphone hovering over the chat panel. Okay, so I'm just going to scroll to the top and I'm going to find some questions. As you know, I like people to put the word question in square brackets or a question mark at the end. That way we can skip through the hellos and, and such. Here's the first one. Is there a guide on your channel on how to make and import weapons into GG? Not Yes, for GG Classic, but it was a bit scant and not many people made weapons from our flimsy advice. So for Game Guru Max, we are going to do a proper document. Um, nicely proofread and edited, lots of screenshots and some files, some template files that you can load in to your favourite art package as a starting point. So we are going to absolutely encourage people to create their own stuff, not just weapons, but objects and other things to import. And I think weapons and just like a non-weapon hood object also quite vital if you want to create a non-violent game. So we are going to create a document for that, absolutely. Whether it's available for release, I'd like to, but I'm not putting that one down as a promise. But it's definitely on the short, short-term roadmap. Another question. Um, with the square brush paint tool, will there be a snap grid option for painting roads with markings? I know what you mean. So you've got sort of a, a square brush, which is exactly 50 by 50, and you want to be able to just go bink, 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 and it's nice, even, flat. It's a good idea. It's sort of um, it's a quick way of doing it without having to go through all the mess of a spline thing, which is something else I've been thinking of doing. So you could just set out your control points, and then boom, bake, and then it paints this nice road, not just flat, but following the terrain, etc. Um, no plans for a grid system on the terrain, only a grid system on the placement of entities, but it's a great suggestion. Uh, please keep it alive in the Game Guru forums, and it's not a huge job to do, so if we read it at the right time, it goes into the panel, and you have your wish. Another question, um, will we finally be able to make proper caves with the terrain tool? No, there are no plans to support cave creation in Game Guru Max. You'll have to do the traditional classic hack which is you have your terrain, you then drop a massive gully down, almost a vertical drop, and then inside that void you've just curved out, then you add your rocks and your paths and your ceilings and your entrances, and you surround that void with the entities that represent your cave pieces. Uh, it's been done like that for many years in the industry. There's obviously other techniques like voxels and uh, cutting holes in terrain, but you can still do it the old-fashioned way, and it'll still look like a pretty decent cave. The king, of, of course, is to have great entities, have great models that you can bring in so they look really good and convincing. Another question. This one's got a glowing Game Guru in orange. Uh, Game Guru missed Deckle and Entity wall snapping we had in FPS Creator. Can we please, please have that back? Um, we do have some form of entity snapping on walls. Um, it's deactivated by default because it was a little slow and some people on low-end systems didn't like it. So we switched it off by default. Go onto the Game Guru forums and ask that question. I'll show you where the flag is you switch it on. Then you can snap things to walls. Um, it just does a lot of ray casting, you see. That's why it's a little slow on some systems. Uh, some reports that the zombie looks too wet. Sure. Um, we can play around with that. This is only a 
you're seeing it for the first time. So, uh, yeah, we're going to be tweaking it towards the end when it's all actually in and running in the Game Guru Max software rather than in this sort of prototype phase. Um, some question further down. Diddly diddy. Any improvement to the widget menu and we'll be able to swap out entity textures via the editor? Yes, improvements to the widget system. Not sure about swapping textures. Textures very much belong to the entities that you drag in. And you select those entities when you're doing an import of the model. Changing the textures well after the fact. Um, it's a great idea, um, but you don't want to really turn Game Guru Max into a massive 3D editor. So I'm not going to promise that one, but uh, let's discuss it some more in the Game Guru forum. I got time for one more question, um, which will come down to this one, which is bleeding me dry entertainment. Will we be able to import uh, all GG models into the GG Max engine um, for the VR? You can do it manually, yes. You can get your old assets from Game Guru Classic, copy them into your Game Guru Max folders, and then you just jump to the add new entity and there they are, you can drag them in, backwards compatible, they'll work, no problem. Um, for answers like that and millions of others, you will absolutely be able to find them all on the Game Guru forums, which is where I'm going to point you to next because all the questions I didn't get to today, I'm going to copy them out, clean them up, correct the spelling, and then I'm going to create answers for all of them, including the ones I've just done verbally. So check out the Game Guru forum thread it will say broadcast five answers and you'll be able to find all the rest of your answers there. As you can see, I'm getting closer and closer to that 15 minute milestone. <laughs> I've still not done it correct, uh, but I don't mind. I don't mind. I'm getting closer. That's the main thing. I am showing promise. So until the next broadcast, which will be in two weeks time on a Wednesday 4 p.m., I'll say goodbye. Thanks for listening and uh, certainly check out this recording on YouTube channel in the next four hours. So until then, I will switch to that pretty music. Bye-bye.